Yes, folks, it's Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Thank you very much for your previous comments and liking and subscribing. Come on, it really helps this channel, you know. And I'm going to talk today about something that's on the news. It's in all the news. You go and have a look online. H.M. Prison Garth, which is not a million miles from where I live, actually. It's next door to HMP Wymot in Lancashire. And it says on the news and from all reports that HMP Garth is like an airport. You know, there's people flying drones over there and uh, taking drugs, other supplies such as tobacco and SIM cards and mobile phones, etc., flying them into the prison. Now, it can't be beyond the wit of man how to stop this. I mean, they could put a form of netting in front of the cells to prevent that, and a form of netting extending upwards, perhaps about 15, 20 feet on secure metal poling all around the prison to prevent the actual drones from getting in. I would think that that would be cost effective, but hey, I'm not an engineer. I'm just a commentator here and a former prison officer who's been in there and dealt with the troubles. It says also in the latest report on HMP Garth that the, that the staff seem reluctant to challenge the inmates on offending practices. Apparently what they've been doing is using the uh, kettles in the cells to make themselves a hot drink. And they've been using the elements in the kettles to burn holes through the perspex windows that are in their cells. They don't use glass anymore. Perspex windows and they're burning holes through them to allow the drones to come down and they can snatch whatever goody bag that they happen to have dangling from them and uh, it's also apparently there's a high degree of uh, violence in the prison and as I said the staff are reluctant to handle it you can see why the staff would be reluctant to get stuck in because if they do what they're going to do they're going to press the alarm bell and and, and, and the uh, the Vernon's girls are going to turn up you know, it's the whole test system. That won't answer it. I mean, cast your mind back to uh, uh, strange ways in the 60s and the 70s where you rang the bell and you got a tribe of big heavy bastards storming in. And that was the gang at Strange Ways. That was the gang that, was the gang that rang Strange Ways. The jailers. What have they got now? They've got ethnic minority groups, they've got uh, subcultures in there, they've got uh, the white supremacists who are no doubt a group in the prison, and, and they're running the show. And why are they running the show? Because the staff are frightened stiff of getting a grip of one, because they will be uh, subject to retribution, no doubt. And then by the retribution, I'm talking about uh, inmates snatching them and uh, they're having no backup to actually deal with this. There's also a great deal of staff shortages, according to the report. Don't take my word for it. Have a look online. Do your own research. But that's my research. That's what I'm finding, that uh, the prison is understaffed and there's a great deal of staff's uh, sick leave being taken a disproportionate amount of sick leave. Now listen, this HMP Garth is located in Lancashire. The cost of living in the area immediately surrounding uh, HMP Garth is approximately 60% of that which would be found in the Greater London area. And they're paying very similar wage rates. So if they can't recruit staff, at jails like HMP, Wymot and Garth, where can they recruit staff? It isn't, it isn't just the fact that the remuneration is insufficient because now that they're bringing in these uh, new wage rates, new, new minimum wage rates, which will pertain to uh, HM prisons, uh, 
people can earn a reasonable living wage stacking shelves at uh, Tesco's. And it's a damn sight safer than plodding the landings in Garth or any other prison for that matter. And the government seems to have allowed the prisons to deteriorate to the point where they are practically unmanageable. I believe that the governor at HMP Garth is a man called Andrew Lund, who by all accounts is doing the very best he can and is fully aware of all the issues pertaining. But given the fact that he's operating virtually with his hands tied behind his back, what can he do? What can anybody do? People ask me, say, oh, well, if you were the governor, what would you do? Well, it isn't at that level. It's at cabinet level. I've noticed in the uh, the latest budget report, there has been no vast amounts of money, you know, like two billion or three billion even, ring-fenced for the prison service. It's going to need, as I say, I keep saying this and saying it, it's going to need a massive, great, high, top security prison in a remote location such as Dartmoor uh, and stick all the, the lifers, all, all the seriously dangerous prisoners in there, people who are committed to long terms of imprisonment, who are not coming out for the foreseeable future. Put them in there, and the staff need to work on a limited shift system whereby they do two weeks on, two weeks off. You'll get your staff then. But at the moment, you're not going to be able to recruit the big boys because, quite frankly, you can get more money elsewhere. You can, I mean, if you're a, a big fella, ex-military, uh, you can you can get yourself uh, e e employment doing one-to-one uh, -one security. You know, protection for celebrities. For a time I did this, so I, went, well, I went with Tom, Tommy Cooper and uh, Frankie Lane and um, for, for a short period of time I was uh, the security for the Angelo Dundee the manager of Mohammed Ali yeah so it can be done and if you're a if you're a handy lad you know I was I'm not now, I'm not now by the way but uh, if, if you can do that then that's what you're going to do rather than plod the landings with a set of keys a big hat and a stick that you don't pull out for fear of having it placed in a rather uh, inappropriate uh, orifice. But HMP Garth, it's a prison in crisis, but it isn't the only prison in crisis. The whole damn thing is falling flat on its face. It's operating, still operating at capacity. Garth is overcrowded. It only holds, I think, 860 inmates at the moment. But that is beyond its capacity, which is capacity is scheduled at 801. So even a prison of medium size like that is still overcrowded. It's also, uh, it's got areas that are in disrepair, mainly because the inmates smashed them to bits. What do you expect? I mean, listen, you get some of these inmates out there, put them in a Premier Inn. All right, you know what you get with the Premier Inn. It's perfectly perfectly good. I use the Premier Inns many, very many times. You put this, a gang of them in there, they'll just trash it. It won't last very long, will it? Break it to bits. That's what they're doing with the prison system. And there is no retribution for their actions. The staff don't deal with it. And why don't they, don't they deal with it? Because a number of them sit down to piss. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I know that the ladies are trying. But basically... And I, they shouldn't be put in that position. HMP Garth is run by the prison service. It's not a privately uh, operated system. But at the same time, it is failing. And the answer, well, it's a very difficult question to ask. But the answer doesn't seem to be forthcoming. 
Have a look online. Have a look around at HMP Garth today. It's in all the press. It's being uh, absolutely ridiculed as being full of drugs, with inmates saying quite freely they're operating the drugs in the landings, and inmates are terrified because they're getting themselves into debt by taking drugs that they can't pay for, and uh, eventually somebody's going to have to pay for them. And they pay for them by being dealt with on the landings or they get their family outside to pay the money to their representatives and the drug trade is going on inside as well as out. There we have it. And uh, that's my little rant for today. I hope you liked it. Do please like and subscribe. And uh, That's a song dinger, folks. Bet you're terrified now. Well, today, listen, this is not for the faint-hearted, what I'm going to sing now. Uh, it's not for uh, anybody who is easily offended. This is a song by Kevin Bloody Wilson from Australia. Australia, yeah. And uh, it's one of his comedy songs. I like Kevin Bloody Wilson. I think he's a very funny individual. I had tickets to go and see him, but the bloody pandemic uh, cancelled that. Uh, this is... Uh, Kevin's Courting Song, it's called. Kevin's Courting Song. And uh, it's about how he manages to save himself money by not wasting cash on ladies who are not interested in what he has in mind for them. So, here we go. I'll just ring it one more time and warn you, this is not for the faint-hearted. It contains some bad language. And... If you enjoy it, let me know. If you don't, let me know. I don't mind comments, criticism down below. Here we go. Blown too much of me time, buying dinner and wine, and me money on flowers and lollies, only to find that what's on me mind isn't on hers, and she's sorry. So I made up some lines to save waste in time and keep me from blowing me brass. I'm ever so cool, I just prop up the stool right next to hers and I ask, do you fuck on first dates? Does your dad own a brewery? Can I feel your tits? Or would you show them to me? Cos you've got a nice head and you look pretty honest so me face will be leaving in a quarter of an hour. I'd like you to be on it. You know how it feels when you meet first meet a Sheila and the bullshit that you're going through. Like calling her up, telling that you love her, when all you do is just screw. But she wants to hold hands and to meet her old man, sit around for hours and talk. But my new method is you just cut through that shit Get down to the goodies straight off. Do you fuck on first dates? Does your dad own a brewery? Can I feel your tits? Or would you show them to me? Do you sleep in the neck? Do you give head very often? If we can decide your place of mine, well, we can fuck off then. So the next time you see a good-looking Sheila and you'd give her a week's pay just to hold her, don't sit acting dumb, just front her full on and drop a few lines like I told you. This new method of mine might not work every time, but again, no method will. I've been spat at and slapped and needing the knackers but then I got a few folks as well. Do you fuck on first dates? Does your dad own a brewery? Can I feel your tits? Or would you show them to me? If the answer is no to me questions above, then be a good sport and give me the name of a girlfriend who does. That's uh, Kevin Bloody Wilson's courting song. For all those of you who were offended by it, well, I did warn you. 
You can get him on that. He's on YouTube, actually. Kevin Bloody Wilson. Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. Do please like and subscribe.